In just a few days' time, it is the Men's Ironman World Championships. It is, and for the first time, the World Championships are happening in Europe, here in Nice. Yeah, so we're going to be doing a preview of the race, including the course, and some of the contenders. Yeah, we might even be brave enough to stick our neck out and give you some predictions. Now the men's Ironman World Champion will be crowned on the 10th of September here in Nice, France. Now this is interesting for a number of reasons, but namely due to the location and the race. I mean, this is the first time an Ironman World Champion will be crowned outside of the USA, which is probably worth us actually backtracking on ever so slightly and sort of explaining how we got ourselves here very briefly in the first place. Yeah, so the Ironman's reception was back in 1978 on Oahu Island in Hawaii. It was there for four years, then by 1982, it moved to the big island of Kona, which most of us are familiar with. And it stayed there until 2021 stroke 2022. So COVID basically upset things and the 2021 Ironman World Championships were held in St. George, Utah in May of 2022. Yeah, and then later in 2022, we returned back to Kona. However, we had a backlog, backlog of qualifiers and entrants, and therefore we had to commit to a two-day format with the women racing on the Thursday, the men racing on the Saturday. Ironman deemed this a success and therefore committed to this two-day format for the following year. However, the locals weren't quite so happy with it and refused this and suggested it needs to be a one-day format. Yeah, so they had to come up with a solution and that's what brings us here. So they have split the Ironman World Championships. So it's going to be one of the sexes racing in Nice in September and then the other in October, still that second week of October in Kona. And obviously this year it's the men in Nice, the women in Hawaii. That is agreed for the next three years and it's going to continually rotate. So hopefully you are still with us. It's now time to crack on and take a look at the course. Now, because this is a new World Champs venue and the course terrain and conditions are so different to that of Hawaii, the course may well be the biggest deciding factor in who is crowned the next Ironman World Champion for the men. Now, we have actually done a full course preview, very detailed on our channel already, so do go and check that out. But we're trying to sum it up very quickly here. Yeah, so obviously starts with the swim. It's a deep water start going off in waves and it's basically an M-shaped course. So the swimmers head out back in towards the coast they almost get out, but it isn't an Australian exit. So the, M, the middle of the M, they then turn around, head back out, and then finish, obviously, up on the beach. Now, it's likely to be calm waters early in the morning, and the water temperature is pretty warm, so we expect it to be certainly non-wetsuit for the pros, and it's going to be borderline for the age groupers. Yeah, but the bike here is quite possibly the biggest talking point. It's a spectacular single-loop 180-kilometre route that includes 2,427 metres, nearly 8,000 foot, of climbing, most of that happening in the first third of the course. In fact, the course is almost perfectly split into thirds. The first third, mostly climbing, the middle 60 kilometers or so, fairly flat along the plateau, and the final third featuring a lot of twisting and descending. It cannot be more different from the rolling windswept highways of Kona. And then the run is straightforward. It's a four loop out and back along the Promenade d'Anglais, which will be lined with the crowds. And it's just going to be a matter of who's got any run legs left after that bike course. Well, now on to the contenders. And perhaps we should actually start with who is not going to be racing. First up, the Norwegians. Yeah, the 2022 Ironman World Champion, Gustav Eden, and the 2021 Ironman World Champion, Christian Blumenfeld, both are not racing. They have both decided to focus their attention on the Paris 2024 Olympic Games and therefore will not be at this year's Ironman World Championships. Yeah, another athlete opting out is the 2017 and 21 runner-up, Lionel Sanders. We're also not going to see Alistair Brownlee on that start line as he failed to qualify due to injury. And sadly, another casualty is Max Newman, who has recently withdrawn. He was one of the favourites, having finished fourth at Kona last year and won the PTO European Open, but he's just not managed to recover from an injury, sadly. But there is still a huge field of contenders, and I think it's fairly obvious where we should start. Jan Frodeno, yeah, the greatest of all time. It's not a title that's handed out lightly, but I think being an Olympic gold medalist and three-time Ironman world champion is fairly well earned. Frodeno has announced that this race in Nice will be his final professional race of a career spanning well over two decades. Whatever happens on race day, the triathlon world will tip their hats to the great man on the 10th of September. 
But this is not just a lap of honor. Jan is in shape, great shape, and it would be unwise to bet against him. He recently celebrated his 42nd birthday, making him possibly the oldest pro in the field, as well as the most decorated. Having recently won the PTO US Open against the best in the world, Frodeno is determined to end his career on a high. Are we gonna see a fairy tale ending to an incredible career? Well, we're certainly gonna be cheering for Jan to go out on a high. And next, Magnus Ditlev, ranked number two in the world. He's won Challenger off the last two years. The 25-year-old is undoubtedly, on paper at least, the strongest biker in the world. But it's going to be interesting to see if he can translate those strong time tile abilities and his 80-kilo frame to that power converting to the climb on this course, as well as, obviously, the twists and turns of the descents. We think he probably can, but he's certainly going to be one we'll be watching closely. Oh, yeah. We've also got Sam Laidlow. Sam surprised us all in Kona last year with his epic bike, but also an incredible run that claimed him seconds overall. But his performance this year is almost as hard to predict. He got eighth at the St. George Ironman World Championships in May of last year, and then a sixth in the PTO US Open just weeks out from the event. This year, he got eighth at Roth, and then won Challenge London just about five weeks ago. So your guess is as good as ours. And then we have Daniel Bacchard ranked top 10 in the world and deservedly so but that is from his consistent performances however to win the Ironman World Champs Nice is going to need an exceptional performance we're not saying he doesn't have it but he is going to certainly have to up his game and have the performance of a lifetime oh and we also can't forget Patrick Langer twice Ironman World Champion from 2017 and 2018 and also second at Challenge Rot this year Langer is someone who should be well suited to the Nice course on paper anyway recently celebrating his 37th birthday Langer is one of the lightest men in the field and one of the fastest runners. So could we see Langer back on the world championship podium? But at the same time, we haven't really seen him race on a course like this with a hilly bike. So it's hard to know how he'll perform. And Leo Chevalier is someone who has proven himself on this course and he's also proven himself on the hills. He's had success at Embermann and Alp d'Huez, so we know that this course could certainly be one to suit him. Also, the fact that he is pretty much at home. He races under the French flag, even though he trains in the UK. So I think he's going to be one hoping to take advantage of this change in location. Yeah, now there is another athlete that will know this course very well, having grown up just a stone's throw from here. And in fact, possibly knows this course better than anyone. And that is Rudy Von Berg. He was also the winner of Ironman France last year and also was on the podium at the 70.3 World Championships when they were held in Nice too. Unfortunately, though, Rudy has got a bit of a mountain to climb, having broken his collarbone in a bike crash when actually wrecking and training on this course here in Nice from a collision with the car. So he is back, he is healthy, but has he got his fitness fully regained? Okay, I don't think we're going to be needing these anymore, Mark. The sun has beaten us. We are literally just next to the Promenade d'Anglais, keeping it authentic here. But we've just got a couple more athletes to cover. Clément Mignon has got to be one of the favourites. He lives pretty much on the course here. He's had a top 10 finish at Kona last year. And most significantly, he's going to have a lot of confidence coming off the back of the win at Ironman Nice in June on pretty much the same course. You could just say he's only 24, so maybe he doesn't have the experience, but that naivety could possibly play to his advantage. Yeah, and an athlete you really can't forget also is Cameron Worth. He rides for Team Ineos Grenadiers. No one really knows, is he a pro cyclist that does a bit of Ironman, or is he an Ironman athlete that just dabbles with a bit of pro cycling? Anyway, either way, he is an absolute uber biker, and arguably the tougher the bike course, the better he is. Well, he's done his homework, including racing Ironman France in June on the course, but his swim often lets him down, and it remains to be seen if this bike course is long, tough, and technical enough for him to overcome that swim deficit and even build a run cushion. Either way, look for him to change the dynamics of the race as he moves through the field. And then there are a few final names that could be overlooked, but I really feel shouldn't, and one of which is Joe Skipper. Now, a non-wetsuit swim might put him at a disadvantage at the start of the race. However, we know that he's incredibly strong on the bike and the run, and the fact that it is a very hilly course, we expect to see less of a pack dynamic that could really play into Joe's hands. Coming fifth in Kona last year, this could be the course for him. Yeah, we've also got Dennis Chevreau, who actually won the Ironman European Champs last year 
and this year, and also recently placed fourth in the PTO Asian Open. So another Frenchman that could do incredibly well here. Yeah, and then we've got Braden Curie. He might be ranked 50th in the world, but we don't have to rewind very far to see him on the podium. He finished third just behind Lionel Sanders in Utah in the 2021 World Champs that were only last year. Yeah, he's often an athlete that is overlooked, isn't he? I know, he? I don't know why. Yep, um, but there are obviously many other top male pros on that start list that could easily upset. But I do think your pony is going to come from one of the guys that we've mentioned on the start list. But who are going to be those three? I mean, after 70.3 worlds, I feel like, God, it could be just a complete wild card. But anyway, um, should yes. we play out there? Have well, you got the same predictions as me? We haven't actually conferred. No, we haven't. Uh, do you want to go first? All right, OK. <laughs> so I am going with Jan. A few months ago, I would have said not in the top three. But now I'm just going to say, yeah, I think He's got that confidence. We know he's done it many times before. I don't say much more about Jan. So Jan, then I'm going to go for a little bit of a, not a wild card, but like a, a, a new to the podium, Leon Chevalier, and then Clermont Mignon. Interesting. Come on. What is interesting is we, we really <laughs> don't know how some of these athletes race on the hills because we don't often see Jan racing hilly races. Yes. Magnus Ditlev. I don't know how he climbs on the hills. Yeah, I mean, yes. That's, but anyway, I am <laughs> gonna can't. I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna say Magnus did left for the win. Oh, but I wow. really have no I actually have no idea how well he climbs, but okay. I, I'd love to see Leon Chevalier on there. Yeah, so I'm say I think second. mine's a want as well. I'm gonna say second. And I'm also gonna throw Jan in there third, but I'm oh. yeah, I'm just not sure actually. Oh, okay. Well, let us know your predictions and yeah, to see if anyone actually gets this right. But before we go. Um, you've probably noticed that we are wearing new t-shirts. We are in Nice, and if you fancy getting a flavour, there you go, nicely displayed there, of this beautiful nice. sea. Oh God, there's too many of those jokes. If you fancy getting in the mood for the Ironman World Championships, then go and check out the GTN shop.